So for gun love, uh, I did research on gun culture in the United States. I interviewed some survivors of massacres. I went to the National Rifle Association on a few occasions, visited their museum. In fact, I have a text called The Church of Gun about the NRA Museum. And also just studying uh, the, the, the way that guns are trafficked and taken into Mexico, uh, because that's uh, a big problem for Mexico and the rest of Central America. I live in Mexico City, so I've been fortunate not to have uh, close contact with uh, that kind of violence. But I also have done research in Guerrero for other books where I have felt that world closer to me. When I did the research for Prayers for the Stolen and for uh, just to try and sort of comprehend that world, I, I could say that there were moments that were dangerous. And with gun love, uh, I didn't encounter the same kind of dangers because with Prayers for the Stolen, I was uh, interviewing people in hiding. It was very sensitive, speaking to the women of drug traffickers. But the books speak to one another. And in fact, both the books are, I consider them a diptych. You can read them individually, but you can also read them together. They speak to one another. You know, the most interesting horoscope I ever have had in my life was sometimes your favorite things are not your favorite things. <laughs> um, I would have to say, I mean, it's very hard to know, but I think my favorite feminist, I think, would have to be Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, the great Mexican poet who was a nun, uh, who lived, you know, hundreds of years ago. She was actually a feminist and a great poet. I'd have to say I am afraid for the future. You know, as the president of Penn International, it's very alarming to see uh, basic rights of freedom of expression, respect for the press being harmed. And it's happening all over the world, and it's very worrisome.